And when it comes to apples, parents will say, well, aren't apples a huge choking risk? And certainly if you offer your baby a raw, crunchy, a crispy apple or an apple with the skin on, that's a huge choking hazard for early eaters. But it's really easy to make apples safe for baby lead weaning. And so the way I do that is cut the apple, we peel the apple, core the apple, and then you poach the apple, which is simply simmering the apple in a small amount of water until it softens. So we want to get it fork tender, or as I say, if you can shred the food between your fingers and your thumb, then it's safe for your baby to eat with their gums. And yes, you can definitely make apples safe for baby lead weaning. Hey there, I'm Katie Ferraro, registered dietitian, college nutrition professor, and mom of seven, specializing in baby lead weaning. Here on the Baby Lead Weaning with Katie Ferraro podcast, I help you strip out all of the noise and nonsense about feeding, giving you the confidence and knowledge you need to give your baby a safe start to solid foods using baby lead weaning. One thing that a lot of parents and caregivers say when they're starting solid foods is they just don't know where to start. And even when it comes to, oh my gosh, what's my baby's first food going to be? What's the best food to start solid foods with? There's no right or wrong answer. And on this show, we've covered a lot of different options for foods that your baby can start to learn how to eat. One of the most downloaded episodes from way back in the day is an interview that I did with Dr. Alan Green. He's a pediatrician who founded the White Out Movement, and his approach and his idea with that movement was to educate other pediatricians. So he is a pediatrician, but he wanted to show other pediatricians and doctors why iron-fortified white rice cereal is not the ideal first food for starting solid foods. So as a dietitian, I'm a firm believer that there's a place for almost all foods in an infant's diet, with some notable exceptions, you know, flaming Hot Cheetos, probably not the best first food for your baby. But I want to share some simple starter foods for you. If you are just totally like, I don't care what my baby eats, or I don't know what they should eat, or where do I even start? In this episode, I will share 10 of my favorite easy starter foods that work for baby led weaning so that your baby can start learning how to eat real food at or around the six month age. In today's episode, I'm going to cover how to move on from the simple starter foods. We have a lot of families that come out strong out of the gate with avocado, banana, and sweet potato. And then I'll check back a few weeks or even months later, and guess what? The baby only is eating avocado, banana, and sweet potato. So let's push past those simple starter foods. We'll talk a little bit about meat, because I know that if your family eats animal foods, you might be a little apprehensive about your baby eating lamb, for example, on day four of starting solid foods. In my 100 First Foods Daily Meal Plan, we do do lamb on day four. And if you want to check that out, it's all inside of my program, Baby Led Weaning with Katie Ferraro at babyledweaning.co. But I also want to cover in this episode how to keep trying new foods even as you reintroduce familiar foods that your baby's already eaten. Because that's the point here. We want to keep offering your baby new foods so that they can achieve that all-important diet diversity. If you're doing my 100 First Foods Challenge, then your baby will be eating 100 different safe baby-led weaning foods before they turn one. But it's not just a one-and-done situation where you do broccoli once and you're like, I hated it, but at least you tried it. A child may need to see a food 10 or even 15 times before they like or accept it. So I have a system for moving your baby through new foods, five new foods a week, while at the same time also reintroducing your baby to familiar foods from previous days. And I like to start each of these solo training episodes with the baby-led weaning tip of the day. And today's tip is... Your baby may need to see a food 10 or 15 times before they like or accept it. It's not our job to force the baby to eat it, but if we look at what our roles are in the feeding dynamic, we as parents are responsible for what the baby eats and where the baby eats and when the baby eats. Okay, this is Ellen Satter's division of responsibility in feeding theory. So again, parents, our jobs is to be in charge of what the baby eats and when the baby eats and where the baby eats. But your baby is ultimately in charge of how much or even whether they eat. So if you go back to your roles, which does include what the baby eats, that's what we're going to focus on in this episode about 10 easy starter foods for baby led weaning. If we're looking at the what, we don't just offer it once. It is our job to give that baby a wide variety of exposures so that they have lots of time and opportunity and practice to learn how to eat it. And sometimes parents will think like, oh my gosh, well, my baby didn't like that food, so I'm going to stop feeding that food, okay? Or he didn't eat much. The parents are like, well, this, you know, this doesn't work. He can't, 
can't pick the food up. He's not feeding himself. I'm just going to go ahead and spoon feed this baby a puree because I want to make sure he gets enough. But I want you to hang tight because I'll be sharing with you today a foolproof way for you to recycle those familiar foods back into your baby's diet so that you can be automatically reintroducing your baby to those foods early and often. So let me tell you a quick story. There's a mom named Marielle who's in my program, and she decided to do the 100 First Foods approach with her baby. She is following my 100 First Foods daily meal plan. And so I always send out surveys after parents join the program just so I can get to know more about them and their baby and what their why is. You know, why do you want your baby to learn how to eat real food and use this approach? Like, what is it about it that really resonates with you? And Marielle, the mom, said, and this is her quote, I am a picky eater and I do not want to have a picky eater. I need ideas of what foods to offer my daughter that will take me out of the limited foods that I eat myself. And what I love about that quote is Marielle is being real, she's being vulnerable, that not all of us as adults, admittedly, have a great relationship with food. And when you look at your baby, this blank slate who's never had anything in their mouth except infant milk, so that's breast milk or formula, and now it's up to you to help them learn how to eat real foods, it can be a little daunting and a little overwhelming. But there are so many benefits to allowing our babies the opportunity to feed real foods to themselves and learn how to eat real foods. And this approach, baby-led weaning, it does help reduce the risk of severe picky eating. Now, no one's claiming that baby-led weaning prevents picky eating because picky eating is actually developmentally appropriate for toddlers. Your baby, no matter how quote-unquote good of a mom you are, and you are all fantastic parents and caregivers, they're going to experience some degree of picky eating when they cross over into that second year of life or maybe a little bit later. And if you look at the fact that most conventionally adult-led spoon-fed babies, so the parent is shoving the spoon in the baby's mouth, they're going to have at most 10 or 15 foods by the time they turn one. And if you lose those 10 or 15 foods to picky eating, that becomes a very challenging child to feed. But if the baby has 100 foods, under their belt by the time they turn one, and then you lose 10 or 15 of those to picky eating, it's no big deal, right? Because your baby still has 85 or 90 foods that they will eat. And so that's the whole premise behind the 100 First Foods approach to starting solid foods with baby led weaning. It's getting your baby ramped up during this phase. It's called the flavor window. And it's this brief period of time where your baby will like and accept a wide variety of foods. And since it's our job to be in charge of what the baby eats, And because it's perfectly safe to offer your baby one or even more than one new food a day, we want to take advantage of that flavor window. And parents will say, yes, I want to take advantage of that flavor window and I want to do all of these new foods. But you'll run into parents like Marielle who are like, but I myself don't eat a whole bunch of foods. And that's perfectly fine because you have the opportunity to open your baby's world to a wide variety of foods, which at the same time may actually help you increase the variety of foods that you eat if that's something that you've been looking for towards doing as well. And some parents will say, you know, I haven't been the best about cooking food. I do a lot of takeout or we eat at a lot of restaurants or I do convenience foods or packaged and fast and fried foods because I'm busy, I'm working or I have a life and I don't always have time to prep food. And that, well, that's perfectly acceptable. That is that is real life. And one of the benefits of baby led weaning is that it does allow your baby to learn how to eat modified versions of the same foods that the rest of your family eats. But at the end of the day, you are responsible for feeding this person for the next 17 and a half years of its life. So I tell parents, you know, you might as well do the hard work now while your baby is open to eating a variety of new foods. And these are 10 easy starter foods that will make it easy or for you to maybe get out of that rut. If you're like, oh, I just know how to do white rice cereal or the purees or pouches that I see at the store. Now, If you're at a place where you can't write something down, if you're doing your laundry or you're driving to work or you're walking your baby, I do have a free feeding guide that has all 10 of the easy starter foods that I'm going to share today, along with preparation tips on how to make them safe for baby lead weaning. Because that's the crux of all of the content that I create is to show you which foods your baby can eat, when to offer them, and how to make them safely. So the 10 Easy Starter Foods for Baby Lead Weaning Guide, you can grab that if you head to babyleadweaning.co slash resources. Again, that's a full free feeding guide with all of the info that I'm about to share here. You can download that for free at babyleadweaning.co slash resources. Hey, we're going to take a quick break, but I'll be right back. So let's get started. Food number one, I'm going to start you out with three of the most popular and easiest 
foods to start with if you want to do baby led weaning. And one of my favorite first foods, acknowledging again that there's no right or wrong foods to start with, is avocado. Avocado is such a fantastic food for baby led weaning for a couple of reasons. Now, I have, I don't know if this is technically a disclosure to a report, but for many years, I was a national spokesperson for the California Avocado Commission. I'm from California. I grew up in an area outside of San Diego that has a lot of avocados. And Unfortunately, there's less avocados than it used to be because of the water situation and avocados do require quite a bit of water. But for before I had kids for many years, I loved, love, 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 love teaching about the benefits of avocados. And then I was still a spokesperson when I had my first daughter. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is like the perfect baby food. Now, a lot of parents love avocados for the reason that they're soft, okay? Because you, no matter how you start solid foods, you're going to be worried that your baby is going to choke. Oh my gosh, they've only had infant milk in their mouth. How are they going to eat these strips of avocado? But there's a variety of different ways that you can prepare avocados. And so I teach three different ways to do avocados. And I teach, this is part of my purees for a few days approach to starting solid foods. If the idea of your baby jumping from infant milk to strips of avocado on day one is just like too much for you to bear, you can try this purees for a few days approach. And the way that you can do that is first, we'd start with a thin puree of avocado. So I'll take avocado, nice ripe avocado, remove it from the skin, remove the pit too, And when you have the ripe avocado flesh, I'll mix it with breast milk or formula and get it into a nice thin puree that you can offer off of a preloaded spoon or out of an open cup for your baby. And what we're just testing here is your baby's ability to swallow something besides infant milk. And we do that for about the first five minutes of the feed. The baby might take a few tastes. They might grab the spoon out of your hand. They might chug it out of the cup or just sit there and look at it, which is pretty standard too. In the second five minutes, I'll do a chunkier puree where I'll just take the avocado, the ripe avocado, and mash it with the back of a fork and get it as smooth as I possibly can with my own, you know, without having to use a food processor or anything like that. And that chunkier puree, I'll put it in a suction bowl. The baby can pick it up and feed it to themselves or use that preloaded spoon. So I'll do that for the second five minutes of the meal. And then for the last 10 minutes of the meal, I'll do soft, solid strips of avocado. So I'll cut the avocado into pieces about the size of my adult pinky finger, put them out in front of the baby and allow them to pick it up and feed it to themselves. So day one, avocado. The second day, I'll do banana. So banana is a wonderful fruit for baby led weaning. It comes in its own nice aseptic packaging with the peel, right? You never offer your baby a banana peel. Banana peels can be a choking hazard. You don't eat bananas with the peel on, so we don't offer babies bananas with the peel on. You see that sometimes on other accounts. We have heard horror stories of babies choking on banana peels because of that approach. So again, it's kind of a trendy, gimmicky online social media thing, but don't give your baby banana peels. Instead, take your ripe banana, cut it into pieces about the size of your adult pinky finger. I'll usually do that by taking the banana, cutting it in half, right in the middle, and then cutting the two halves then into quarters. So with a whole banana, you'll end up with eight banana spears. Put a couple of those in the suction bowl for your baby. If you're still too nervous to be doing those soft, solid pieces on day two, you can do that purees for a few days approach where you do the thin puree of banana, the chunkier puree of banana, and then move to the banana spears. And you can do that all within the same meal. And you might be asking, well, do I only offer my baby solid food once a day? In my program, in phase one, which is the first eight weeks of starting solid foods, we recommend you do solid foods one to two times a day. So find one or two times in the day where you can get your baby to sit in their high chair for 15, maybe up to 20 minutes and explore and experiment with that food. It is not so important how much they're eating, but rather that they're getting lots of experience to learn how to eat. The third food on the 10 easy starter foods list is a starchy food. So we generally do a fruit on day one, a vegetable on day two, a starchy food on day three. My favorite starchy food to start with are sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes are beautiful, bright color. You can get orange sweet potatoes, you can get purple sweet potatoes. You can get the white ones that are kind of basic looking, but they taste amazing. I usually roast the sweet potatoes in the oven when they're just cool enough to touch and they're done nice and soft, usually when the sweet potato is bubbling is the indicator that it's done, I'll pull them out of the oven, let them sit on the counter until I can just handle them. So it's still kind of hot. And then I'll quickly peel the skins off of the sweet potato. Pro tip, it is way easier to peel a sweet potato once it's already cooked, but before it gets really cold again. So peeling them, you could peel the sweet potato before you roast it, but that's a lot of work because I'd rather just pop it in the oven. I'll usually pierce it a few times with the fork, roast it, usually up to about an hour. And then when it's done, just pull that peel off and get that nice soft flesh. I'll put that into strips about the size of my adult pinky finger and offer it to the baby. On day four, we'd like to do a new protein. If your family eats animal foods, I say jump right into trying your first meat. I mentioned in the 100 First Foods Daily Meal Plan inside of my program, we do lamb on day four. 
in this 10 easy starter foods list, I've got chicken for you on day four. Chicken feels very approachable to families, even if they don't make a ton of meat. Like, yeah, I can handle making a whole chicken. I have a lot of resources for you on how to make a whole chicken or how to make chicken safe for baby lead weaning. And you don't have to do any glamorous recipes right off the bat, but I do recommend starting with the fattier cuts of meat. So the legs or the wings or the thighs, because those fatty cuts of meat, the fat there helps it your baby swallow that food more easily and more safely, right? Because when you cook that protein, the chicken, okay, the fat, as it melts, it's going to lubricate those protein strands. And so I don't love dry meats like chicken breast. And I don't care how good of a cook you are. Your chicken breast is going to be more dry than if you did leg, wing, or thigh meat. So we pull that off of the bone, put it in strips about the size of your adult pinky finger, offer it to a baby out of the suction mat or bowl. I usually offer additional low sodium or no salt broth to add more moisture, which will in turn also make it easier for your baby to eat. So we've got avocado, banana, sweet potato, and chicken on day four. On day five of our program, we always offer an allergenic food. So there are nine foods, we call them the top nine. Those nine foods account for about 90% of food allergy in North America. And it's a good idea to start working those into your rotation on week one. So I think one of the easiest allergenic foods to start with is cow's milk protein. Now, if your baby's already had formula, of course, they've been exposed to cow's milk protein and you know they're not allergic to milk. But for our exclusively breastfed babies, yogurt is a great way to introduce your baby to cow's milk protein. I have a whole episode on how to choose a yogurt for baby lead weaning, but I'll summarize it for you in that we want plain whole milk yogurt. Plain meaning it's not vanilla, it's not sugar sweetened, there are zero grams of added sugar. And whole milk meaning it's not reduced fat, non-fat, or low fat. Your baby needs that fat from the whole full-fat dairy products for their still-developing brain. They have a little bit of non-fat dairy here and there. It really doesn't matter. I had a mom the other day who's like, oh my gosh, my husband went to the store and he bought low-fat plain yogurt. I don't want to throw it out. Is it okay for the baby to eat? Yes, 100%. It's totally fine. But for the most part, we default towards the full-fat dairy foods, if you can, offering that off of a preloaded spoon for day five. So this is my five-step feeding framework where we offer a new fruit on Monday, a new vegetable on Tuesday, a starchy food on Wednesday, a protein food on Thursday, and then an allergenic food on Friday. And when it comes to yogurt or the allergenic foods, we do that allergenic food two times on Friday, two times on Saturday, and two times on Sunday with no other new foods across the weekend, although you do continue to reintroduce the familiar foods from previous days. And that's because we want to observe for any potential reactions. But please remember that if your baby is going to have an allergic reaction to a food, the vast majority of allergic reactions will occur within minutes and up to no more than two hours following ingestion, So you do not need to wait three to five days between foods. And I have other episodes on that topic as well here on the podcast. So what do you do the next week? Well, we're going to move into the second week, the second five foods. So food six to 10 on the 10 easy starter foods for baby led weaning list. Number six, apple, the new fruit. You can do apples. People, oh my gosh, but apples are a choking hazard for babies. Of course, if you offer your baby a raw apple or a hard apple or a crunchy apple or a crispy apple or apple with the peel on, of course, that is a choking hazard for early eaters. But You can make apples very safe for baby lead weaning, and they're a wonderful food, one of my favorite first fruits for baby lead weaning. And the way I do that is we do poached apple strips. So you cut your apple, you peel the apple, you core the apple, and then you poach it, which simply means simmering in a small amount of water to soften the apple. We get it nice and soft. So fork tender, it has to pass what we call the squish test. That's where if you put the apple strip between your forefinger and your thumb and you press down, there's a little bit of give. I always say if you can shred the food between your fingers and your thumb, then it's safe for your baby to eat with their gums. And you can season those poached apple strips with cardamom or with cinnamon, or you don't have to season them at all, but it's very, very possible to make apples safe. And that is a favorite food, number six, on the 10 easy starter foods for baby lead weaning. Hey, we're going to take a quick break, but I'll be right back. So number seven on the 10 easy starter foods for baby led weaning list is cauliflower. You could really do any vegetable. There's 20 different vegetables on my 100 first foods list, but cauliflower is such a fun one, cauliflower, broccoli, because they have a built-in handle, right? If you cut the florets of the cauliflower, the broccoli off the head, you get a little handle that your baby can use to then scoop the food up and into their mouth. And one of the most important premises for prepping food safely for baby led weaning is that we're making foods about the size of your adult pinky finger that the baby can pick it up and feed it to themselves. So I have recipes for steamed cauliflower and roasted cauliflower. Curry roasted cauliflower is one of my favorite. It's perfectly acceptable to add lots of seasoning and spices to your baby's food. We just avoid added sugar, added salt, and anything that's super spicy that could hurt your baby's mouth. So food number eight is any sort of cooked whole grain. 
as adults, we know for the most part, oh, I should probably be eating some more whole grains. And as a dietitian, I don't want you to get stuck in the pasta, potatoes, and rice rut that plagues so many families. They know their baby needs carbohydrate. It's important fuel for a child's body. But other than pasta, potatoes, and rice, they're not sure where to get it. Well, my 100 First Foods list has 20 different starchy foods. And that's the food that we generally do each Wednesday. So we do a new fruit on Monday, a new vegetable on Tuesday. When it comes to the starchy foods, there's 20 different starchy foods on that list and a variety of different whole grains. So I challenge families to pick a wacky whole grain off of the starchy list, starting right in the first or second week of baby led weaning and recognize how easy these foods are to cook and also to notice, gosh, there's so much cool nutrition in there, right? And babies eat foods for lots of different reasons. And I don't want you to get fixated on the nutrition, but certainly having a number of different whole grains in your arsenal with iron and plant protein and that all important fiber, that's going to serve you a lot better than some of the refined grains that we too often find children becoming reliant on. So one of the favorite ones that I like to start with is a grain called buckwheat. Buckwheat actually doesn't contain wheat, so it's not technically an allergenic food, but it's very easy to make into a thick porridge, kind of the consistency of oatmeal that you can then offer to your baby off of a preloaded spoon. Or when the buckwheat cereal cools after you cook it, you can actually form it into little logs about the size of your adult pinky finger and offer that to the baby to pick it up and feed it to themselves. So don't be shy about trying whole grains. Buckwheat is a great one to do. That's food number eight. Food number nine, it's time for another protein food, again, for the families that eat meat. Beef is a very versatile protein food. It's rich in iron and zinc. It's also got a lot of really cool taste and texture properties, but we don't offer steak to early eaters. And sometimes I think parents get confused. They'll they think, well, gosh, you know, steak is beef, and certainly it is, but there are, steak is not a safe cut of meat for babies. And as I said, if you can shred the meat between your fingers and your thumb, then it's safe for your baby to eat with their gums. And any steak you've ever had, you can't shred it between your finger and your thumb. But there's lots of other ways to make beef safe. And some of my favorite cuts of beef, we have a lot of recipes in the program around beef brisket. Beef chuck roast is another great one. I love beef short ribs. These are all cuts of meat that provide the nutrition, the taste, the texture opportunities of beef, but are certainly much safer for your baby to eat. And food number 10 on the list, it's time to do another allergenic food. Egg is another great one to start with. There's no right or wrong order to go in when it comes to the allergenic foods, but because cow's milk protein, egg, and peanut tend to be the three most common pediatric food allergies, if you don't care where you start, I'll start with cow's milk protein, then I'll do egg the next week and peanut the next week or some variation thereof. But egg is so versatile. I just did an episode on a lot of different ways to make eggs safe for your baby. If you haven't done egg yet, I highly suggest you bump that one up on the priority list because once you've done egg, once you've passed egg, once you know your baby can tolerate egg protein without having food allergy reactions, then you can start incorporating eggs into some of your other baby-led weaning recipes, especially when you get to those whole grains. We have a lot of fritter recipes inside of the program that shows you how to make different combinations of the cooked whole grains, but the egg is an important ingredient in there because eggs act as a binding agent, meaning they hold everything together. And so when that egg protein, which were the, the egg white, which is where the potentially allergenic part of the food is, when that cooks and it coagulates, it kind of holds all the other ingredients together and makes it a lot easier to make intact fritters that your baby can then pick up and feed to themselves. So there you have it. I'll go through the 10 easy starter foods for baby led weaning again. Avocado, banana, sweet potato, chicken, and yogurt for week one. And then coming back in week two with apple, cauliflower, cooked whole grain like buckwheat, beef, and egg. If you want to grab a free copy of that 10 easy starter foods for baby led weaning feeding guide, it's on my website at babyledweaning.co slash resources. And if you want to check out the full baby led weaning with Katie Ferraro program that has the 100 first foods daily meal plan and all the videos and recipes that show you exactly what foods to make, how much to offer and when to offer, and then how to prep them safely. That's the most important part. All of those videos, all of that instruction is inside of the program, and that's available at babyledweaning.co slash program. A special thank you to our partners at Airwave Media. If you guys like podcasts that feature food and science and using your brain, check out some of the podcasts from Airwave Media. We're online at blwpodcast.com. I'll put the links in some of the other episodes I mentioned, as well as resources and how to get the program and that free feeding guide all in the show notes for this episode. They're linked below where you're listening or online at blwpodcast.com. This is episode 16. Thanks so much for listening. I'll see you next time. <laughs>